there at the that center on in Market Creek Plaza. It's just a matter of uh, finding a staff person, you know, that's willing to get, you know, go pull it out for us. But I'll definitely follow up on that. Good morning, morning all. John Dwyer here, just but you know I'm here in the background. Good to see Hi. you again. Hi, John Dwyer. <clears throat> Good morning, Hi, everybody. Janet. Janet, we have reached a quorum and we are recording, so we're ready when you are. I am ready. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm Janet Poutre, and I'm chair of the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture. Thanks for joining us this morning for our monthly meeting of the commission. Uh, welcome to all our commissioners. Uh, I'd like to ask my colleagues uh, on the commission to keep your video on uh, throughout the meeting to remain as accessible as possible to our audience. And I hope that the staff will do the same. <clears throat> We're gonna do a quick roll call. <clears throat> Pardon me, I have allergies today. Um, unmute yourself and say present when I call your name. So Commissioner Frank, Commissioner Blevins. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Bossler. Commissioner Brown. Commissioner DeZenzo. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Hughes. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Meza. Present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Nwana. Commissioner Opsted. Present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Smith? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Schoenbrunn? Commissioner Whooper? Present. Thank you. And um, I see Commissioner Bossler. Are you he actually here? Present. Thank you. Good morning. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Um, and anybody else uh, that I missed the first time around? Commissioner Frank? Commissioner Brown? Uh, and Commissioner Nwana? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Your attendance has been noted. And uh, joining us today uh, is our arts and culture staff, including Executive Director Jonathan Gluss, Chief of Civic Arts Strategies, Christine Jones, Senior Public Art Manager, Chuck Miller, Interim Senior Arts and Culture Funding Manager, Carla Centeno Aguirre, Project Manager, Bel Reza, and Civic Art Project Manager, Dr. Laura Bullock, as well as representatives from the Office of Boards and Commissions, City Attorney's Office, and our great city IT department. <clears throat> okay, um, I would like to now call on Tracy DeCenzo to, um, <laughs> to uh, read our vision and mission statement, which you will find at the bottom of your agenda. <laughs> Sorry, I have to take off my glasses to read it off my phone. So, okay. <clears throat> uh, vision, expanding our world by celebrating creativity in San Diego. Our purpose um, is the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture serve in an advisory capacity to the mayor and city council on promoting encouraging and increasing support for the region's artistic and cultural assets, integrating arts and culture into community life, and showcasing San Diego as an international tourist destination. Thank you. <clears throat> well done. Thank you. Um, Already um, now, before we get into today's agenda, I'm going to ask uh, Belle Reza if she wouldn't mind just running down some of the guidelines for uh, the way this meeting works. Belle? Good morning, commissioners. Um, in an effort to provide greater accessibility, members of the public may join the meeting as webinar attendees in order to provide virtual non-agenda and agenda comment in real time. Commissioners, city staff, and authorized presenters are attending the meeting as panelists, and the meeting will function for them identically to a typical Zoom meeting. As a quick refresher, please note the buttons on the control bar at the bottom of your Zoom window, the camera icon to activate your video, microphone is to mute and unmute. Please remember to stay muted when you um, are not talking and to unmute yourself when you speak. You'll also see the chat window button. Please keep your chat window open at all times as you will be using the chat to signal when you'd like to speak. 
please refrain from using the meeting chat for anything other than signaling that you'd like to speak in order to comply with Brown Act. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Um, also, uh, like to note Michael Brown, Commissioner Brown is with us as well. Um, thank you for coming. All righty. <clears throat> so, um, first off, uh, we have an action item. Uh, I want to explain. We wanted to uh, change a couple of little things, add a couple things to this agenda since the last executive committee meeting, um, most notably some uh, uh, a tribute to Larry Baza. So, um, in order to do that, um, we have to suspend the rule by which the commission's executive committee sets the agenda, and um, we today um, can approve this new agenda. So, um, do we have any public comment for this item? Um, yes, we do. Um, we have one that was submitted, which I'll hand it over to Christine to read, and then we'll check in with the members of the public. All righty. Um, the item is actually for non-agenda public comment, so why don't we hold it for that time period? Okay, great. Okay. Um, and then to those members of the public in attendance, please click the button to raise your hand and indicate that you would like to comment. I will enable, enable you to speak and send you a prompt to unmute yourself in the order it was received. And seeing none, Janet. Very good. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> would uh, somebody like to make a motion? on this action? Don't I move. That. Was that you, Ann? Yes. Thank you. Um, do we have a second? Tyler? I second. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there any discussion? Anybody have any question about any of this? Great. If we're ready to vote, um, then I will um, go ahead and Call your name and please unmute yourself and say yay, nay, or abstain. Um, okay, uh, I'm gonna call on the folks that I know are here. If I don't call your name and you're here, then I don't know that you're here. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Blevins. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Bossler. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Brown? Uh, yay. Thanks. Uh, Commissioner DeCenzo? Unmute. Yay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Was yay. That, thank you. Yay. Yeah. Commissioner Hughes? Yay. Thanks. Uh, Commissioner Meza? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Opsad? Yay. Thanks. Commissioner Smith? Yay. Thank you. And Commissioner Whooper. Yay. And my vote is a yay. When your chat window is open, the space bar to, oh, I gotcha. Okay. Um, all righty. So that passes. Um, let's move on to non-agenda public comment. Do we have some non-agenda public comment? We do have one written comment and then um, we'll hand it over to see if there's any um, in-person public comment. Alrighty. So uh, the public comment we received was from Anthony A. Lebu, and the comment is reminder, April is the month of the military child and arts for veterans organization will be conducting a virtual kid fun fest artsforveterans.org. An invitation, join my creative community partners in an online event tomorrow hosted by Vet Art Project. The um, event takes place tomorrow, February 27th at 2 p.m. That concludes the written public comment. Okay, and then now to those um, members of the public in attendance, please click the button to raise your hand and indicate that you'd like to comment. I will enable you to speak and send you a, pr um, a prompt to unmute yourself in order. When I call your name, please state your name for the record and you will have three minutes to provide comment, after which you will be placed on mute again. If you are joining via phone, please press star nine to raise your hand. I will call you on you by the last four digits of your phone number. When I call on you, press star six to unmute yourself. Please raise your hand now if you'd like to provide public comment for this agenda item. So I'm gonna um, mute. Okay.
Good morning. I'm uh, Matt Carney, for the record. I'm the co-chair today of the San Diego Regional Arts and Culture Coalition. Uh, I want to give some love to Larry. The first time years ago that I presented to this body, Larry Baza was chair, and uh, even his support in that moment at the library and uh, Barrio Logan. Uh, I remember that day very fondly and uh, want to honor him today. Uh, thank you, commissioners and staff, for everything that you do and for the opportunity to speak this morning. Uh, we wanted to give you SDRAC, uh, we wanted to give you an update on our most recent event and invite you to participate in April Arts, Culture and Creativity Month. This week we partnered with the commission and our sister organization on the state level, Californians for the Arts, to host a town hall type regional conversation. With over 150 attendees, we discussed federal, state, and local updates and listened to the field to guide our advocacy priorities. Themes surfaced like assistance needed for rent and of course, reopening guidelines. We're committed to continue to work with county and state officials to put the art in restart to get creatives working as soon as possible. To note, a poll conducted during the meeting revealed that 40% of attendees had not contacted their local electeds in the last four months. So we know we have some work to do like advocacy 101 type trainings in the future. We'd also like to invite you for participation in arts, culture and creativity month in April. There'll be month long activities, including highlights of arts and educational programs occurring in advocacy week, April 19th to the 23rd to speak to electeds in Sacramento and a virtual day long convening April 22nd, 27th. Please reach out to us for participation, particularly during advocacy week, as we know that there may be legislation and federal relief dollars that need advocacy to support local arts agencies and our creative workforce at large. Thank you for the time. Okay, great, and we have one more. Okay, Tony. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year, a little bit belatedly. Good personal news, I received and survived my second COVID shot, courtesy of the VA hospital in La Jolla no adverse effects. And if there are any veterans or veteran family members listening, uh, urge them to contact the VA and uh, get vaccinated ASAP. The message I sent uh, through the web form was to invite everyone to attend the Zoom virtual event tomorrow called Art Cafe, hosted by Vet Art Project. And they have received a $3 million grant, a million dollars a year for three years, which among other things will provide two art cafes somewhere in California annually. So until uh, COVID subsides, they will all be virtual. In the web form, I sent uh, an image and a link. I urge you to take a look at that and that's all tomorrow, the first event starting at 2 p.m. and goes until about 5 p.m. There will be um, 10 or so creative community partners. When you access the portal, you get to see a video interview of each participating creative and then an opportunity for interaction with public comment. So it's a, an exciting platform um, by Feed Loop. Lots of features, lots of opportunities for public engagement. I'm really excited about it, feel blessed to be a member and urge everyone to attend. I'm also a participating creative in Veteran Voices and they have uh, some online events coming up in March and I'll advise you as that happens. Also a reminder that April is the month of the military child. 
and I will reactivate the time, talent, and treasure we invested last year to put together a virtual kid fun fest, which was quashed by COVID. So we will reactivate everything. And that will include a military child story project and a wide variety of other uh, exciting interactive opportunities. So again, I wish to thank all of you, board members and staff for all the fine work you do to promote and produce arts, creativity and culture in San Diego. And you can count on me to continue to be part of this art world. And I'm also putting together a series of walks across San Diego, at least if not California, to promote uh, April, the month of arts, creativity and culture. So look for me on the street somewhere with a banner with a flag and you can come and join me. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. All the way, Tony. <laughs> One more. Okay, Lynn. Yes, um, thank you. I'm Lynn Vasquez from the New Children's Museum. Um, we're still here <laughs> and say hello to everybody. I wanted to, to, to first express my gratitude to the commission because that's how I met Larry Baza many years ago, probably around the same time Matt Carney did. Um, Larry was, was the chair and it was my first job in the arts um, world, having come from social services grant writing. And Larry was amazing. Um, he's also one of the few people I've actually met with a Guamanian heritage. I was born on Guam as an Air Force brat, but I'm always fascinated by others. Anyway, I also wanted to let you know that among the many things that we're doing at the museum, despite being closed, um, we are starting an artist talk series that kicks off next Wednesday, March 3rd from 6 to 7 p.m. We're gonna be talking with Katie Ruiz, a Chicana artist who is doing a mural for us for our planned reopening whenever that might be. Um, and she's just somebody amazing. And I would like to put into the chat, maybe the link where you can see um, how to register for the event. And otherwise, I just wanted to say thank you so much for these Zoom meetings. As somebody who's always late <laughs> to in-person meetings, it makes it, you know, it's much closer to my uh, goal of Star Trek time, right? You know, beam me up and I'm there. So thank you so much for, and I hope these are able to continue. And that's it. Thanks so much. Thank you. And Janet, I just wanted to note that uh, Commissioner Jackson has joined the meeting. Thank you. I noticed uh, the phone number looked familiar, but I couldn't place it. Oh, hi, Ann. Um, and welcome, Gina. All right. Um, thank you for those public comments, everybody. Um, before we move to the chair's report, um, we do have um, a couple of action items this month. Do we have public comment on those? To those members of the public in attendance, please raise your hand if you have would like to comment. Um, seeing none, Janet. Very good, okay, great. Um, okay, so first up, um, we're going to talk about Larry, and I'm, I'm going to ask Commissioner Smith um, to lead this portion of my report. Um, but I, I first I want to say, um, you know, I didn't know Larry as long as a lot of people, and um, but I when I came to the commission, I was you know P Green, uh, a freshman on the commission, and I. Uh, it's really Larry who made me feel like I belonged here. Uh, a lot of the people were uh, intimidating to me. And he, um, he made me feel like I belonged and that my opinions and my uh, thoughts about things were valid, uh, just as valid as anybody else's. And I, I really appreciate that. But that's who Larry was. He was a really sweet, gentle gentleman, um, the, the, the greatest sharp dressed man. <laughs> Um, I loved that um, wonderful uh, kind of flannel gray jacket that he had. It was so cuddly. Um, 
anyway, anything that I do right as the chair, I learned it from Larry. And um, I'm sad to know that I'm not going to be able to call him up anytime and ask him, what the heck do I do now? Um, so um, with that said, Rebecca, please, would you go ahead and, and lead us in, in remembering Larry? Thank you. And I, first of all, also just wanted to say, um, I'm so grateful to Matt and Tony and Lynn for still showing up. Instead of saying, I miss the days when we would see you in the morning at some glorious place around our city, I'm gonna say, I look forward to the day when we will see you in our meetings again. So thank you, Matt, Tony, Lynn, for joining us today. Um, I feel like usually I can speak very clearly and directly, and I don't know if I'll be able to do that right now, but I'm so grateful for the chance just to share about Larry for new commissioners. What I invite you to maybe consider is as you hear us talk about Larry and the work that he did with us, I think if anything, maybe just an invitation to you as a newer commissioner, maybe who did not know Larry, just to say, this is the work ahead of us. Um, and we are here, those of us that had a chance to work with Larry to um, share what we were able to learn from him with all of you. So as Matt mentioned at the regional conversation this week, which was incredible, our colleague Victoria Hamilton asked us to consider dedicating our work, especially our advocacy work. And I'm gonna say this to us as fellow commissioners, our advocacy work to Larry. And I can't think of a just more energizing and um, really inspiring way to look at the work ahead of us. So what I wanted to do is just, as Janet has done, just share a few thoughts. I am the longest serving art commissioner right now. I've been on this commission since 2012 and want to maybe just give an opportunity for um, maybe a few of you who did work with Larry as well to speak. But what I just wanted to share very quickly is when I think of a phrase that reminds me of Larry Baza, the phrase is work is love made visible. And when I think about that phrase, I think that is absolutely Larry because there was something about how he made the work really visible in the way that he was intense about this work of uplifting the arts and culture community in our, in not just our city, in our region, in our state, and even nationally. There was an intensity, there was an intentionality about how Larry worked, and yet there was something that was so approachable and so gracious, and I could see it every time we met with an elected official, a business owner, or even when he met with my family. Um, my husband will say that the last hug that he got at an event when we were out in the world was at the Museum of Art for the Balboa Park Trustees event back in March 2020. And as we were walking away, my husband said, my last, last hug was Larry Baza. And um, I don't know, that just really makes it special for us. Larry, as Janet, you just mentioned, Larry always showed up as a gentleman dressed and ready to go. And he had everywhere that he had to be. When I was listening to all of the folks talk at the regional conversation the other day, he really impacted us from so many corners. When you look at the writing in the San Diego Union Tribune, I've never seen an obituary like Larry's where people were really looking to speak into the impact that he made on them. And I'm sure there were so many others that probably had to be edited out, right? For clarity and brevity. And then finally, I just wanna say there's something about Larry that was just fearless and tireless. He did take care of himself. I had the opportunity when he was chair, I met with him once a month um, before the commission meetings, we would meet at Harley Gray and Mission Hills um, in my neighborhood. And we would talk about the work ahead but he did it in a way that was always about just taking care of himself. Um, he drank Arnold Palmer's. I just thought that was always really fun. And not only was he fearless and tireless, um, Larry Baza was also matchless. And so it's with that spirit that I just want to invite a few commissioners maybe who had a chance to know him just to maybe share a few thoughts because this is our space just as the regional conversation had an awesome space to do that the other day. But I do want to end with this call to action to all of us as commissioners taking up Victoria's charge. 
if we are going to carry on this work in Larry's name, what I want to put out there as a challenge and an opportunity to all of the commissioners, new or not, is can we commit to at least reaching out to one staffer? One staffer, because we know that the work, and Tyler can tell us all about this, that the work of this advocacy really does have a lot of opportunity with the staffers. If you could think about reaching out to one staffer before we meet again next month and doing that in Larry's honor. So thank you. And I will wait to see if there are, let's just say in the interest of time, maybe one or two other commissioners that want to share. Tyler. Um, like Rebecca, I've known Larry for, uh, I probably met Larry back in uh, maybe late 20, uh, the, the late start of the 20th, the 21st century, um, I, while I was still working uh, as an arts administrator and coming calling to the Commission for Arts and Culture, always announcing uh, there are exciting things going on at my organization. And Larry would sit um, both on the commission as a, as a commissioner and uh, when Robert Gleason was chair and then uh, when Larry became chair and always encouraging, always excited to hear and always uh, to a young arts administrator, he was always uh, kind and gave of himself in his time and his expertise. Um, uh, like Rebecca, I can only praise his sartorial efforts. Uh, the man was a consummate artist and it came out in his dress. It was impeccable, but with an eye towards forward fashion. And I love that about him because that meant this is somebody with art in their DNA. This is somebody who knows how to present uh, a whole artistic package. And I always love that. And though my time with him serving on the commission was brief because he rotated off his chair, I always knew I could go to him with questions, always knew, uh, especially in my role in advocacy, uh, I could take his lead uh, both from the, the California Arts Council, but also just as somebody who knew San Diego and had it etched on his heart. And he was just the kindest, smartest, driest wit. And just, I, I was devastated to hear of his passing. And uh, I look forward to redoubling my efforts as chair of advocacy and uh, helping with everything we do in Larry's name. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Jason. All right, good morning. Um, good morning. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Congratulations, you're the first person to get me to actually cry in a commission meeting. Um, oh, Tyler, wow. good speech as well, good eulogy, good comments. I really appreciated that. Um, I, I don't think I thought about this ahead of time or prepared much, but I, you know, I like to think of people who transition as just transitioning, not necessarily gone. So I'm going to talk about, you know, who I think Larry Baza is, even though, you know, I won't actually see him anymore, as opposed to in terms of was, um, because, you know, his impact, it's, it's still here, it's everywhere, particularly in the arts and culture community, but in other communities like the LBTQ community and San Diego as a whole. He's, he was a giant for us all in various, various ways. But I, I just wanted to talk about how special he is. Um, <clears throat> he's just, he's one of those people who, I don't know, he lights up a room and he makes you feel important. Doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. And he makes you feel like you have something important to contribute and you know he did that for me from day one when I first participated in a panel he was you know giving me positive feedback the whole time I believe my understanding is he batted for me to actually get on to the commission after me being fortunate enough to work with him in my first panel um, and then 
one of the really neat special things, at least that I, I still think about, is my first meeting with him as a commissioner. Um, he bought me lunch at Japango in La Jolla, which fantastic food. I don't know if it's still around, but um, after you know the pleasantries and him listening about my story and getting to know me, um, his introduction to me for the commission was essentially this. He started with, you know, Jason, I want you to think of me as your dad on the commission. Any questions you have, any concerns you have, anything you need, just come to me and I'll help you out. I'm the guy to talk to. I'm here for you. And I think he was that for a lot of people in all of these various com communities, you know, more than a friend, you know, almost a father figure in a lot of ways. Um, I wasn't that close to him, so I don't want to imply that, but, you know, he, he made me feel an element of that anytime I was with him, anytime I was in the room with him, anytime he spoke to me, I felt very comfortable. He was always making sure he's taking care of, you know, me and other people. And, you know, that's, that just sums him up for me when I think about him. So I'm going to leave it there and, and let anyone else speak who, Thank who you, has Justin. to, because he will be sorely missed. That's the last thing I have to say. Agreed. Thank you, Jason. I do see that Commissioner Bossler and Commissioner Brown want to speak. So I'll invite them and mm. then turn over back over to um, Commissioner Poutre. Anne. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a tough one. It's a tough time. And um, losing Larry, it's as though I feel like when we finally come back to uh, meetings and being able to go to arts institutions that somehow he's still going to be there. Um, I've thought a lot about him and um, when he was sick and the contribution that he's made and the difference that he um, was able to make and the way that he was able to stand up for so many causes on so many levels and be such a trailblazer and to do it with such um, decorum and decency and integrity and honor and to bring that lens of a difference needs to be made and a conviction and to be able to hold himself in a way that others look to him and the energy in the room when he was there. So um, with heartfelt gratitude and definitely some sadness, um, a profound thank you to Larry Baza for all that he did and who he was and the example that he set for the rest of us. Godspeed. Thank you, Anne. And again, I just want to say thank you to anyone that is here on this call with us and definitely to commission staff. I just appreciate that we can have this time. So thank you that we are taking this time. Um, Commissioner Brown. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, give a little tribute to Larry. Um, you know, he was the chair when I joined the commission. Um, and was large, largely responsible for making me feel comfortable enough to actually join the commission. Uh, and I'm grateful for that, for his uh, friendship and for uh, his welcoming spirit. He was also um, a huge friend to the San Diego Museum of Art, who uh, you know I work for, that's my day job. And uh, without his support, you know, we we wouldn't have had um, initiatives such as the um, Art of the Open Air, which is uh, responsible for all the sculptures that are out in the Plaza de Panama in uh, Balboa Park. And uh, he just stood behind uh, the museum and, and supported us. Such a, uh, you know, great friend of the museum and um, and I wanted to just, you know, make sure that everyone understood what, uh, 
what a level of support that he offered to us. And, and uh, thank you, Larry. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michael. And again, I will just repeat my invitation challenge um, to all of us as commissioners <sighs> in Larry's honor, one reaching out um, mode to a staffer at one of the elected's office. Let's do this um, for Larry. Thank you. Janet, back to you. Oh, hello? Oh. Uh, I, I note I, uh, I want to note Doreen Schoenbrunn, Commissioner Schoenbrunn has joined us. And um, Doreen, um, did you want to speak to this? I would love to. He's a dear friend. Uh, for okay. Uh, I Sorry, I've had a lot of technical difficulty. I got on this uh, and I was able to go through. So I coming in at the very end and I'm so sorry, but Larry was uh, very close to me and I wanted to share briefly um, uh, how he has changed my life. The first day that I entered uh, the meeting for the art commission very eight years ago, uh, I was very nervous and very insecure and going, I don't think I can do this. And all of a sudden I looked up and there was this big, tall, handsome man. And he was so warm and welcoming. And he said, hi, I'm Larry Baza. And all of a sudden it just all my fear and anxiety just melted away. And I will never forget that day. Um, he was an angel, one of the angels on this earth, the warmest man and loving, intelligent, articulate, but caring about all people, all people. And um, I, we, up until recent, you know, until he was sick, we would meet at um, a restaurant and have coffee and talk and catch up. But when I was on the um, education committee, I was chair of the uh, arts education committee for the commission, I could see that we were going nowhere with this. And it was devastating to me because my passion is arts education uh, for children. And he said, look, I want you to come aboard with me. I have a new, um, uh, a new project that I'm doing with Russ Sperling, who's a, a, a district superintendent, well, excuse me. He is the director of VAPA, which is Visual and Performing Arts for the uh, uh, Unified School District. And I said, and it was just a natural thing. And about three years ago, I joined them. And now I'm president of the foundation. And he was um, uh, the vice, he was president uh, at one time of, of it was, it's, just, it's still a more grassroots government uh, organization, but we've been able to do, make a difference. And we've been able to raise a lot of money and um, not enough, of course, but change the lives of some of these kids. I'm going to miss him dearly. I cry all the time. He has, we had plans to do a, a very wonderful project together. And I thought he was doing better. I had, and I just took it as he was doing better. He was coming through this, but he wasn't. And I just love you, Larry, so much. And I'll always love you. And I'll always have you in my heart. And I just, uh, that's all I, I want to say, but you were gifted everybody who met you and that's all I want to say and thank you very much thank, thank you Doreen um, okay um, anybody in the last few minutes we have um, quite a bit more going on today so um, I but I want to hey let everyone this is Tina oh I will try to speak thank you I just sent Janet an email um, just torn up We'll miss you, Larry, and thank you. You good, Gina? I, I see you sent me a text. I'm sorry. Okay, um, anybody else? Okay, well, it's obviously a terrible loss 
to our arts community and to a lot of us on a personal level. And um, his light will not pass this way again anytime soon. Um, to uh, move on to some of the quotidian uh, things we have today, um, we have um, an action item to review the minutes from our January special meeting. And before I get to that, I want to thank Rebecca for um, organizing that. Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate that. And thank you, everybody who spoke. It was great to remember all those nice things about Larry. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, we have to approve minutes from the special meeting on January 27th. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll okay. make the motion. Thank you, Commissioner Blevins. Do we have a second? I'll second. And oh, thank you, Commissioner Bossler. Okay, great. Do we have any public comment for this? There's no written comment, so it's a question of whether there's any attendees that would like to provide comment. Raise your hand if you'd like to. Seeing none, Janet. All right, great. So um, I hope everybody had a chance to review these minutes. Um, and um, if anybody has any comments to make or uh, feels there are edits to be made, um, please let me know. Type speak. Okay, I don't see any. So um, let's go ahead and take a vote on uh, approving these minutes. Um, so when I call your name, go ahead and unmute yourself and say yay, nay, or abstain. And remember, you don't have to have been at the meeting to vote on this. So, Commissioner Frank? Yay. Thank you, Commissioner Blevins? Yay. Thank you, Commissioner Bossler? Yay. Thank you, Commissioner Brown? Unmute yourself, don't forget. Commissioner Brown? Okay, get back to him. Commissioner DeZenzo? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Hughes? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Jackson? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Meza? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Opsad? Yay. Commissioner Smith? Yay. Okay. Commissioner Sonbrun? Yay. yay. Commissioner Whipper? Yay. And my vote is a yay, uh, so that carries. And you know what, Commissioner Brown, are you back? Okay, well, this is great. Uh, I believe we have like all the commissioners are here today, except for um, Ujoka. Okay, um, now I wanna hand this uh, back over to Commissioner Blevins uh, to introduce our next presenter, um, Dahan. Yeah, we have an okay. action item before that, the adoption of the Black History Month statement, which Don will read, and then we'll move to the presenter. All right, let me just, for clarification, is uh, Jason on, on with us? No, Has he's he not. He, no, he emailed at 9 a.m. to say he's unable to attend. Oh, okay, so the video, um, I'm seeing something says it has to come from Google. Uh, yes, he shared that. He shared the video, but he hasn't shared uh, rights. So Chuck and I are unable to access that. Um, but we are on the statement right now, Dahan. Okay. Okay. As we celebrate the legacy of Black history during the month of February, the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture would like to acknowledge the spirit of perseverance within African-American culture. From the many historical figures to our first African-American vice president of the United States, this spirit has been a strong force in people of African descent throughout the world. This spirit refuses to be broken and like the now runs deep in the soul of America. We as a commission, will continue to uphold this strong legacy in the work that we do. Our mission reflects just that, and we will move forth with solidifying our commitment to artists of the African diaspora and exemplifying diversity in arts, 
and culture in San Diego. Thank you, Jahan. Um, now, um, we, uh, we need a motion to adopt this statement uh, in a second, and then we can discuss the statement, um, what we'll do with the statement, all of that sort of thing before we vote. So um, can I have a motion to adopt the statement? Dahan, you can do that. Well, can I ask how, how does everybody feel? We don't- it, Well, we're gonna it, talk it, about it, but we have- okay. we, Yes. I make the motion. Thank you, dear. And then could I please have a second? I second. Thank you, Doreen. All right. So let's talk about it. Dahan, go ahead. I wanted to get some feedback from everyone else on it. Um, a few of us got together and talked about it and went back and forth, but we really wanted it to be a <laughs> joint effort. And so I just wanted to get a general impact. Hmm. Does anybody have a comment to make or would like to discuss this type speak in your little chat box? Uh, is that current? Well, I do want to speak. This is Gina, if it's okay. I know I'm on cell phone, so I can't say speak or anything. Okay, and I noticed uh, Rebecca and Anne both uh, typed speak. I got confused. I thought that was from the last batch. So, um, Rebecca, do you want to go ahead? Uh, sorry, Anne, do you want to go ahead? I was just typing speak to be able to move that we approve. I think it's terrific. Okay. Um, Rebecca? Same here. Same here. Just to uh, motion a second to approve. Understood. Uh, Gina? No, you know, I just want, wanted to say um, I think it's really great that we are having such a statement. To my knowledge, I don't think we've ever had a statement in reference to Black History Month. So when Dahan presented the idea to me, he's like, what do you think, you know, how can we move forward on it? And I'm like, well, I can kind of write something up really quick right now. And so between he, myself and Yudoka, you know, wordsmithing, changing some things around, speaking with Jonathan, of course, I'm just glad to see that everything has come to fruition, you know, from the idea of the need of having something with this representation through the Arts and Culture Commission. So thank you all so much for your support on it. Thank you, Gina. Um, anybody else? Uh, let's see, Aunt, oh, that was from before, okay. Um, well, I agree, I think it's, uh, I think it's about time. And I think it's good to challenge ourselves by making public uh, these kinds of goals and aspirations that we have for ourselves and for our arts community. So um, I think it's great. Um, does anybody else have something to add? Janet, uh, Tyler raised his hand. Ah, thank you. It's and I think that was Gina. Okay, Tyler, go ahead. Uh, I just want to say, uh, first, I think it's a, a fantastic statement. And um, I think rather than, uh, I hope that we don't let it, the statement and the sentiment behind it um, just be about this one moment in time, this Black History Month. But if we can fold this sentiment and line of thinking into our EDI work, as well as as we push forward with the cultural plan, the idea of um, really speaking to the uh, African diaspora, as well as the greater um, diversity in arts and culture in San Diego, and get these kinds of sentiments built into all of our thinking across the board, I think is so crucial. and. So I'm just going to, you know, throw throw the um, the gauntlet down again about the cultural plan because unless there is a overarching plan, statements like this just recede into the vacuum, and we need to have actionable steps that follow on to this. So I love that this is written and it ri written so clear, forcefully, and beautifully, and I want us to take this as a clearing call moving forward. Right, thank you. Um, Gina? Oh, no, I don't have anything to say. I just wanted to say, Tyler, thank you for that. <laughs> yes, well said. <laughs> and I, I, also, uh, I also want to uh, acknowledge and, and thank everybody who worked on putting this together. Um, uh, it's, I think it's well done. And um, I, I agree that this is a, a good thing for us to do. 
Um, anybody else? Can I ask a question, Janet? Of course, Don. What would be the process to this being put on the website for the city? That's a and great in question. Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know the answer. Okay. Well, I'd like to put it on the table that it possibly be put on the website for the city, the mm -hmm. mayor's office, and the human relations office. Uh, uh, that, awesome idea. Who who does that? Bell, is that uh, something you can coordinate? Yes, that is something that we can definitely take a look at, and I will um, close the loop with everyone on that. Very good. Thank you very much. Good idea, Dahan. Um, and Tyler wants to speak. Yes, sorry, uh, speak. I forgot my K. Um, <laughs> but just a recommendation, uh, since you know we as a commission do not have our own social media, I recommend that all of us take this and flood it on our channel. Yes, because great. we we don't have that ability right now. So you know, Dahan, I think uh, it's great if we can get it on the city website, but also who checks the city website really? Okay. But if we can get it on Instagram, on Facebook, and you know, okay. I think all of us have wider networks than those people who are checking the city to see when they can you know update their permit for their latest thing. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Well said. Um, it, it, is there anything official? Do we, from this point on, can we start using it? Um, well, all we have to do is uh, vote. We have a m motion on the table. It's been second. We've discussed it. Um, so if you feel ready, we can go ahead and take a vote and approve it and move ahead. I'm ready. Yeah. Gina, your thing lights up. I think that's when you... Unmute. Sorry, let me mute again. That's okay. All righty. Um, so then uh, seeing no further discussion, um, I'll go ahead and take a vote. I will call your name. You will unmute yourself and say yay, nay, or abstain. So uh, let's start with Commissioner Frank. Yay. Commissioner Blevins. Yay. Commissioner Bossler. Yay. Commissioner Brown. Yay. Commissioner DeCenzo. Absolutely. <laughs> Commissioner Hughes. Absolutely. Commissioner Jackson. Yes. Commissioner Meza. Yes. Commissioner Opsted. Yay. Commissioner Smith. Yay. Commissioner Schoenbrunn. It's about time. <laughs> Commissioner Whooper. Yay. And my vote is a resounding yes. So the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. And thank you again to the folks that put this together. Thank you, Dahan, for reading it for us. And that's a great idea, getting it on the city website. But Tyler makes a good point, too, that um, we should find a way to share it on all of our social media as well. Um, be, do you think that, Bell, um, you, is this going to be like on city letter? Is it, there an image or something of this? that we can use to share, do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a PDF in the packet, but I can put something together for oh, okay. to share. Okay, I'll grab, I can grab it off the PDF then. Can I just um, share one more thing, Janet? Yes, please. I, like I said, I totally agree with what Tyler says, um, you know, about who checks that website, you know, for the city, but mm -hmm. I do think we also want to change that. But this also, for people like me 30, 20 years ago, if this is a statement that we're making as the commission, then people can hold us accountable by it being there for the ones who do happen to see it. It, it just kind of gives the community empowerment, you know, to hold us accountable about making sure we support them. And they can kind of use that and say, well, it says right here mm -hmm. um, that, you know, you're going to do this and you're going to do that kind of thing. So I just think it's a fantastic step all the way around. Agreed. Agreed. We're doing good work here today, folks. Um, okay, um, now um, I'm sorry that we're not going to see um, Jashan. Uh, Jashan, did I say that right? Um, uh, hopefully next time. Um, and uh, we're gonna skip ahead to uh, Anthony Graham. Are you here, Anthony? I am, hello. Hi, Anthony, uh, let me introduce you. Anthony is an associate curator at the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego. 
and he's going to tell us a little bit about Pacific Standard Time 2024. Uh, Anthony, go ahead, please. You have the floor. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for um, having me here today and, and asking me to talk about Pacific Standard Time, PST, um, which is this enormous and incredible initiative of the Getty Foundation in Los Angeles. And sorry, my slides are just like these kind of boring, super texty slides, but I wanted to have a ton of facts on there so I, I didn't have to remember every detail. Um, but for anyone who isn't as familiar, um, PST started in 2011, um, and it was an initiative called Art in Los Angeles 1945 to 1980. And it was really um, kind of a challenge to uh, institutions throughout Southern California to, um, to establish and write and present and share the art history of, of our region, which has you know, sort of long been overlooked. Um, and, you know, one of the great successes of that initiative was you know, dozens of exhibitions and symposia and public programming that addressed art in Los Angeles. And very impressively, you know, the, the writing of 40 uh, exhibition catalogs on the subject when before the had, there had only been one book um, specifically looking at art in LA from this time period. And so, um, with that initiative, the Getty really created this, this new project to bring all of these different cultural organizations together through a huge geographic region. You know, they like to say San Diego to Santa Barbara, LA to Palm Springs, really the kind of entire Southern California region. Um, and, and really to, to challenge these institutions to realize exhibitions on a large scale um, to really create new scholarship and uh, contrib new contributions to the field and to work in ways that um, that institutions might not normally. So there, there's a heavy hand on collaboration of working with outside advisors and, and bringing in expertise um, from other fields. And so with, with all of that, the second initiative P of PFT happened in fall 2017, and that was called LA, LA, Los Angeles, Latin America, and focused on exhibitions of Latin American art, as well as Latinx and Latino art in the US. And so now um, the Getty has announced the next uh, initiative, which is art and focused on art and science. It seems like they're shifting what the exact name might be. Um, but if we can go to the next slide, um, there have been 45 um, organizations have received grants thus far, sorry, cat, um, for the research and planning of the next PST, which will take place in 2024. And five of those organizations are here in San Diego and are on the screen. Um, they include the La Jolla Historical Society, the Mingay International Museum, the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego, the San Diego Museum of Art, and the UCSD Institute of Arts and Humanities. Um, and this exhibition and project is, is really um, challenging to think about another, sorry, another um, important um, aspect of our region's history, which is the scientific innovations that have happened um, here throughout time. Um, but again, you know, a real challenge to think um, more broadly about the intersections between art and science, what commonalities artists and scientists might have in their methods of inquiry, forms of research, and the ways that they help us think about the world around us. And so um, the, the project has just begun, you know, it's 2021 and the, the exhibitions won't be for another three years. Um, and so all of the projects are, you know, in the research and planning phase, which is, you know, another really exciting thing about PST is that um, with, with this kind of incredible support from the Getty, um, we as you know, art institutions and organizations um, get to you know, start early and plan for a long time and, and um, create these really, really robust programs um, to share with the public. So with that, I think I've kind of rambled on, but that's an overview of what PST is, what PST is going to be. Um, and you know, I hope everyone will, will participate in the shows when they're, when they're um, here. Thank you, Anthony. Um, I'm excited about this. I uh, recall the LA LA show 
um, was uh, great. I went to a talk at the museum um, with uh, some uh, Latin, uh, Latina artists and Cheech Marin and a Los, Lo Los Lobos concert downtown too. It was great. Do that all again. Um, does anybody have any questions for Anthony other than rooting for my plan to have Los Lobos again? No? All right. Uh, Janet, this is Jonathan. If I could just, firstly, I'd like to thank Anthony, but I'd also just like to uh, uh, close the circle on this a little bit as far as, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the role of um, tourism um, around this initiative. Um, you may remember that um, this is the same year that we have a bid in for World Design Capital. Um, so during 2024, if we receive um, the, if we win the bid, <clears throat> um, we will have Pacific Standard Time, um, which really the, the press around PST is extraordinary and very much on a global level. Um, so we're going to have um, global arts attention already on Southern California. Um, excuse me, the events that um, happen in the desert between um, Modernism Week, um, the fairs, et cetera, we're going to have people from across the globe focus on Southern California. So I am hoping that we as a commission can do a better job of um, helping to package and promote and really aiding these institutions in positioning themselves um, as destinations for um, uh, the people who are coming from across the world to PST. Um, I'll say candidly, um, in the past, my understanding is it's been more regional. Um, the people who come to the events in San Diego tend to be more regional. Um, someone coming from London may not take the time to come to San Diego, um, but we've got plenty of time here to work with the Tourism Authority and help make sure that um, we are part of the global um, um, trip to Southern California. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Rebecca? First of all, I just wanted to say, Anthony, thank you for bringing this to us. I just love, love, love good branding. And much as I appreciate the title South by Southwest, I think Pacific Standard Time is just right there too. It's just a really cool, um, yeah, really cool opportunity. I just want this on the record. Again, I'm going to be the one that says we are a biotechnology hub here in San Diego. Our life sciences companies are getting billions, B, billions of dollars coming in. Um, and as we are thinking about the challenges to our arts and culture sector, this is absolutely an opportunity for us to start making some really, really good connections. So, and we've got time. It's right, uh, this is not till 2024. So again, I'll put another call to action out there to the commissioners. Who do you know, who do we know that work in some of these um, companies in San Diego and can we start to make these inroads to let them know about this awesome work that's happening at Pacific Standard Time? Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Okay. Um, anybody else? Anthony, thank you again for coming um, and introducing us to your kitty and, um, and helping us get excited about this um, Pacific Standard Time that's coming up in 2024. Uh, with that, um, I'll move on to our next presenter. Uh, this is our uh, Civic Art Project Manager, Dr. Laura Bullock, and she's going to talk to us about art in private development. Thank you, Commissioner Kutrey. So I'm, next slide, please, Bill. Thanks. So I'm giving you guys the short presentation on art and private development today, just to remind you about a facet of the department that operates outside of CIP and department-initiated projects. So the Art and Private Development Program, often referred to as Civic Enhancement, requires certain non-residential development projects to meet the City of San Diego's Civic Enhancement Allocation Requirement, as stipulated in the San Diego Municipal Code. 
So one of the ways private developers can satisfy the civic enhancement requirement is by integrating artwork into their development project. So today I'll be highlighting a number of artworks commissioned by private developers in fulfillment of the requirement. Next slide. So developers may opt to spend 1% of the total building valuation or project valuation for the overall development project for artworks on the premises, 1% for space for cultural use on the premises, or they may opt to um, pay a fee equaling half of 1% of the total building permit valuation. The fee is also known as in lieu civic enhancement fees or civic enhancement allocations are received by the city and managed by the Commission for Arts and Culture. So most developers, they usually choose the 1% option for artwork on premises, or they elect to pay the fee, which gets deposited into the public art fund. And then the public art fund is then what is used to fund department initiated projects such as Here Comes the Neighborhood or the 2D Breezeway Project or Park Social, for example. Um, so yeah, so with that, and then all of these artworks I also wanna mention are open and accessible to the public. So that's one of the requirements of these projects. So um, everything that we look at today, if you are interested in checking it out, um, it's open so you can go and see it. So um, next slide, please. So with that here, we're going to launch into looking at um, some of these projects. So um, this project was developed for Qualcomm. And the budget for this project was um, $616,112. And it's an exciting project because um, Jenny Holzer is the artist. So if you're not familiar with Jenny Holzer's work, um, she's based in New York. She was born in Ohio. Um, she is an American neoconceptual artist. And her the main kind of focus or medium that she works within is text, text, yeah, text-based projects. Um, she's interested in the like the delivery of words and ideas. Um, she's interested in text um, and it's kind of poetic power, but also how words are used for communication and control. Um, so this piece um, specifically is an 800 square foot transparent screen. And then it has 50 special effects, so lighting effects and motion effects. And then um, there's poetic literary text that kind of scroll, keeps scrolling throughout the installation. Um, and then, yeah, another thing to mention is Holzer stopped using her own text in 2001, so she borrows kind of literary inspiration from um, words from others. So um, I encourage you to check it out. Um, she belongs to um, another thing worth mentioning, maybe you've heard of some of these other artists. I'm sure everyone on this committee is very familiar with Jenny Holzer, but um, she belongs to a feminist branch um, of a generation of artists that also includes like Cindy Sherman, for example, Louise Lawler, um, Barbara Kruger. So um, next slide, please. Okay, so this is just the overall project site. Um, so this artwork was developed for the One Paseo office buildings and the developer was Kilroy. The budget for this project is about $400,000. And the artwork is by an artist named Andy Davis, who is based in Lucadia. So a local artist, next slide. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so um, Andy Davis, he's, he's, he focuses on California surf themes, typically. And so he's um, collaborated with companies such as Billabong and Bands and Roxy. And he's also worked on some films by Thomas Campbell. And he often collaborates with the nonprofit, the local nonprofit Surf Writer. So his artwork helps for donations towards that. So um, here are four of the murals that um, were installed on the One Paseo office buildings. Next slide. And these, this is just more detail. You can see them up close. So this is what they look like when they are finished on a cloudy day. 
Next slide, please. Okay, so this is a project um, developed for the Carte Hotel um, by a Texas-based artist named Beverly Penn. And the budget for this one, $324,999. So the artwork is the spherical sculpture that you see that's kind of embedded in this wall, but it's also the walkway that you see in front. So it's made up of these um, vegetal um, plant motifs. And um, so it kind of creates this sculptural ball. So when you look at it in person, it's very detailed. And it, she has used plants and trees that um, are local. So if you look at the walkway, you can kind of see little individual leaves embedded in the walkway as well. And so she's interested in um, representing a balance between the natural world and the manufactured environment in her artwork. So you can kind of see that put in play here. Next slide. Okay, so this is a sculpture called Drifter by another local artist, Matt Torrens, for the phase three TNB development project. So the budget for this one, $99,000. And so, his sculpture, Matt Torrens sculptures, he's interested in ideas of sustainability. So he likes to use recycled materials or found materials in his work. So this is a whale sculpture made from driftwood. And he's also just known, that's kind of his, his most, what he's most known for, life-size driftwood sculpture, such as the one we see here. Next slide. Here it is kind of more in context. And I will note that if you do want to check this out, right across the street are those Andy Davis murals that we saw previously. So a lot in a little kind of concentrated area. Okay, next slide. Okay, so the next kind of series of artworks we're going to see were developed for the um, Park and Market project. So it's going to be a series of murals. The budget, the total budget for this artwork was $100,798. So the artists are Rafael Lopez, Joe Sotelo, and Tammy Matthews. So next slide, please. So we'll just kind of go through these quickly, but you can see um, it's kind of an abstract mural, um, very vibrant, colorful, inviting. Um, Rafael Lopez is an internationally recognized um, illustrator and artist. Um, next slide. So these are actually across from each other. So as you're like, if you were sitting on these wooden seated areas, you can kind of enjoy both murals simultaneously. Um, so this is the Joel Sotelo mural, also abstract, but a very different style, as you can see, kind of um, incorporating some kind of sea um, aquatic plant life um, motifs and other just kind of abstract designs. Next slide. And then um, Tammy Matthews has created two, two artworks two different screens and also across from each other. So at the top of this stairway, after you enjoy those murals, you get to encounter um, these kind of amorphous designs um, within her screen. So um, you can actually kind of see through the screens in parts. And um, yeah, this kind of overall theme of abstraction is kind of what has sort of framed this overall project. The artwork's kind of working in concert together. So next slide, please. Okay, so this is a project by 20 or 2100 Kettner is the project name for all purposes. Um, the budget for this one, 340,000. It's another project by Kilroy. And so this budget goes to um, fund multiple artworks on the site. So the artists are Paul Wacker, Pander Design Company, Barraquette Kesber, and Bumblebee Loves You. So next slide, please. Just to kind of get an idea of kind of the range of art projects that the developers um, end up choosing. 
So here's the mural to keep going, encouragement that we need, especially now. Next slide. The, this is a um, fluorescent light work, so ciao. Next slide. And then a mural up here, it says here, it's a little hard to read. I mean, sorry, a mural at the top of the building. Next slide, please. And then this is a mural that kind of goes along an interior staircase that is accessible by the public, but it can also be seen from outside the building. So it kind of invites you in, or at least that's the hope. Next slide. And then lastly, this is the Bumblebee Loves You mural. A little cute scene with a boy and his dog. So next slide, please. Okay, so this is another um, artwork that's downtown. Um, some of you guys may have seen it. It is by Lisa Shermer, who um, she's a teacher, painter, designer, public artist, um, also local. Um, she was a longtime Point Loma resident, and it's an abstract um, sculptural design on the side of this hotel Indigo. The budget was $144,152. Next slide. And then this is a project um, in Mission Hills on the Bonds. So I believe it's right along, it's on Washington. So if you're driving next time you're going there, check it out. It's by um, beloved local artist. Philip Schultz Ritterman, um, known for his photography. So he has these kind of romantic, um, it, it features like a romantic natural landscape, this, this tree um, triptych. Um, so yeah, his subject matter for his artwork ranges from nocturnal scenes of industry to views of pristine landscapes like we see here. And next slide. Oh. Vernon says view is from University Avenue. Thanks, Vernon. Um, so next slide is Christopher Puzio, an artwork by Christopher Puzio, another local artist. So it's exciting to see how these developers are choosing to work with local artists and that we can all kind of, you know, the public gets to experience local art, you know, outside of the traditional and typical institution. Um, so Christopher, Christopher Puzio, has made um, this series of screens. Um, they're made out of metal. The budget for this project was three hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars, three fifty or around there. And um, it's at the Hilton Harbor View Hotel. And um, so, yeah, Puzio works primarily with metal. He creates dramatic sculptural and environmental elements. And um, yeah, he's been featured in at. Um, he was featured in the Here Not There show at the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego, if you if you saw that show back in the day. Um, and he's also um, represented in the city's um, civic art collection, which is important to note as well. So I, next slide, Bell. Yes, so that was my final slide. I hope you guys enjoy just kind of seeing what's out there um, in terms of public art, just kind of outside of what, you know, the normal order of businesses that we work with um, on the commission. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Laura. Um, does anybody have any questions for Laura, Rebecca? Yeah, you knew I was gonna ask a question, right? I love <laughs> I'm just partnerships, so so good. Um, Laura, quick question. You mentioned that these developers were choosing our local artists to get involved with these projects. Um, is there a way to even sort of like increase and enhance that sense of our local, uh, our participation from local artists? Uh, like, so I guess my question is, how much do you from the city sort of weigh into their selection process, right? And all of mm -hmm. that, or is it sort of something that you just get informed about later? It, it's kind of a lot of usually the developers um, because it's not something that we control. We're just sort of helping enforce kind of the the municipal code ordinance. Um, they usually will share kind of their ideas after they have an artist on board. So we're not involved in terms of helping them select the artists. 
um, but we just kind of review their propo proposals and make sure that they're adhering to the ordinance. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I don't, I don't really know. We, we aren't really or, involved. Kind of, mm -hmm. Let me, um, if I could, let me sure. um, help you with this. Um, we don't, um, it is kind of a process, uh, a, a passive process at the staff level. Really where the, um, but we wanted to brief you all on this because it is a substantial amount of staff time. Um, number one and number two, it's so, it is under-recognized um, and so much, so impactful in our streetscapes. Um, it's really much more about the art consultants and mm. whether or not the art consultants um, have a good handle on uh, San Diego and um, San Diego um, binational artists. Some have a really, really, really deep knowledge of um, the local artists, some not as much. Okay. Well, that's helpful, Jonathan, because of course I was writing down the list of all the developers, but you're, I think what I'm hearing from you is it's the art consultants. And I wasn't necessarily thinking about staff time. Again, I'm looking at my fellow commissioners on the screen, like there's another opportunity where if, um, if when we are gonna be the design capital of the world in 2024 and when LA is gonna host specific standard time again, wouldn't it be cool to have all of these developers that really understand the work that we do and in the future as they put these projects together that they are considering local artists as part of their selection process. Mm. So Thank it's you. art consultants is what I'm hearing, Jonathan, right? That we need to. That's the. That's the yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Um, I see uh, Tyler. Uh, thank you. And uh, thank you, Dr. Bullock, for this. It's a really wonderful look at uh, all of the non-city sponsored public art that has gone up recently. Um, to uh, Commissioner Smith's point, I wonder if there is, without adding staff time or energies, I wonder if there's a way we can put together a quick, um, call it an artist bank of artists who have gone through, especially when we sponsored the um, how to, I, I, and please forgive me, I don't remember the, the name of the program, but it was the how to apply for public, uh, to be a public artist um, program. I wonder if there is a way we can put together just a list, like at my office, I have a list of accountants. I have a list of tax attorneys that I can, when a client asks me, I can just send them this. And if we could have a list of artists that when one of these arts consultants, art consultants comes and says, you know what, I'm from out of town. I don't know who to recommend, who's, you know, who is available. And we just have this menu to order off of. And it, all it is, is just us collecting the names of local artists and then letting them, letting the art consultants make the connections, et cetera. But at least then we've got a clearinghouse of names uh, especially of people we have worked with to help develop. So mm. just an idea to put out there. Mm. Jonathan? Yeah, I would make two comments. I, yeah, two comments on that. Um, Tyler, thank you for that. One is um, um, there is a history um, with cities of creating an artist, um, an artist bank um, some cities, some programs have actually done a pre-qualified list um, that is less common than now than it used to be because um, they become so out of date so quickly. So you really have to update these things almost annually. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. However, um, the fact that we just acquired 100 pieces of San Diego artists, plus we are commissioning um, um, uh, the social park social. Um, those very quick that very quickly elevates a whole cadre of artists that consultants and the developers um, can see. Thank you, uh, Tracy. 
Yeah, hi. Um, thank you for showing that that information. I, I found it really interesting. Um, my husband is always, you know, as we drive through the city, there's always the question of, is that a commission piece? Is that a commission piece? And I'm like, I don't know what's a commission piece and what's not. But um, to that point, it would be really great if there was a database similar to um, the city art collection database that we have that points out these art pieces and that it's something that we can promote to the public. Mm -hmm. um, there are a number of groups that love to, you know, create art tours and art walking tours. And um, if we knew that these were available or if the public knew that they were available, they might be part of that walking tour or, you know, even just people out for the day. So I don't know if that's something that is on the agenda for later or, you know, if something has been thought about in regards to having a online database. Christine, you, you uh, started nodding your head right away. So yeah, so, you. uh, Tracy, you're, you're, um, that is definitely something that is on our list um, and is something that we um, plan to do. We are gathering materials. We'll have to look at intellectual copyrights and things like that in order to be able to place it. I would think that some type of a mapping component would probably be better than a, um, actually <laughs> or something like this. So it's certainly on our list and, and we very much want to communicate this information out there as well. So yeah, I mean, I promote the city art collection to people all the time. And I say, hey, if you want to, you know, go on a walking tour and see the city art collection, here's where you go to, to locate it. And it would be fabulous to include this artwork in something similar. Absolutely. Yeah. Please share that information with the city count, the community councils as well, because they're asking for that right now. Um, you know, some local artists are doing the mapping, but it would be great if we could do it, you know, literally from the city. It would cool. be cool if we had an app on our phones and you could take the tour, a 10 minute tour, a driving tour, a walking tour. Where's all the software people? <laughs> <clears throat> Alrighty. Um, bring them to the commission, Janet. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Keith, uh, you have something to add? Yeah, just real quick. Thank you, Dr. Bullock. That was fantastic. Love seeing the work of uh, Christopher Puzio's, uh, you know, in different locations throughout San Diego. Magnificent negative space, positive space. I mean, it's just fun to look at, especially different times of day. Um, on the side note, if you make it accessible, the walking tour, I recently did one down at the Embarcadero um, and it was just easy. And you just, it, was, it was, if we can make it easy and advertise, there are so many free, fun things to do that add to the cultural experience, the artistic experience of San Diego. And then also, you know, I, I just envision, you know, the, the airport, almost like the, uh, the Arizona Phoenix airport having uh, the, the, the museum in, in there. So people, when they arrive in San Diego, that is what they see. And we just really just make it just part of uh, the fabric that is San Diego. And, and, and there should be art everywhere and accessible to everyone. So thank you very much for sharing this. Um, some really good conversations and looking forward to seeing where it goes. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Um, okay, anybody else? All right. Um, thank you, Dr. Bullock. That was great. And um, it certainly makes me uh, keep my eyes open when I'm out and about looking for those things. One way you can tell, Tracy, um, your husband, whether it's commission or not, is it a pub, is it publicly owned property? In other words, library or firehouse, whatever. Yes. But if it's a shopping center, no. Um, okay. Uh, next up, we have committee reports. Oh, pardon me, I'm having terrible allergy date. Uh, so let's move on to policy and funding. Uh, Commissioner Bossler, would you like to give us a report? Yes, absolutely. Good morning, everybody again. Um, so policy and funding committee did not have a meeting in February due to a lack of action items, but we want you to know that we're looking forward to convening our next meeting on March 12th, uh, where we will be discussing among other things uh, findings from the most recent arts outreach map updates. And as a side note, this will be year two of the mapping project that we'll be discussing. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask if there was any public comment for these items, committee reports. Um, to those members of the public in attendance, please click the button to raise your hand to indicate that you'd like to speak. And I'm seeing none, Janet. All right, thank you very much. And thank you, Commissioner Bossler. Uh, now moving on to public art, Commissioner Meza. Yes, hello, everybody. Um, <clears throat> we had no action items from our February meeting. 
we received a presentation on the schematic artwork proposal for the Fairmont Avenue Fire Station Public Art Project by Susan Logaretzi. Uh, there will be a virtual artist open house for the public to share their input on that artwork proposal this Saturday afternoon. Staff will share more info on that in their report. Uh, staff will also share more information about the public art request for qualifications that is currently out for the Bayer Park Public Art Project. Bayer Park is a new community park under development in uh, my hometown of San, San Isidro, uh, otherwise known as South La Jolla. Uh, RFQ is out until March 25th, and uh, I would encourage everyone to spread the word. That's my report. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Meza. Um, okay, uh, moving on to advocacy and outreach. Uh, Commissioner Hughes, would you like to give us a report? Sure, thank you all. Um, so a reminder, uh, sorry, I'm just moving my notes around. Um, a reminder that April is Arts and Cultural and Creativity Month. Uh, the mayor is planning to speak during the virtual statewide meeting. And I'd like to recommend this commission uh, request a proclamation for that month that could be presented at the March meeting of the Commission for Arts and Culture. Um, we did it last year, but it kind of got buried in the world of COVID. So now that we're all used to this, um, that would be great. So um, uh, if we could uh, take a motion after my report, um, I, or I'm putting forth a motion to um, request a Sorry, I'm buffering. Uh, uh, a proclamation from the city. Um, also wanted to thank the San Diego Regional Arts and Culture Coalition, as well as Californians for the Arts for the recent convening I was able to attend. Uh, the energy in that meeting was palpable. Thank you, Jonathan, for attending. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Smith, for attending. Um, and thank you, Matt Carney and everybody at the RAC for putting that together. Um, the plan for doing more outreach to elected officials was very exciting. As Matt Carney noted, uh, the 2021 advocacy efforts are going to be in the name of Larry Baza. And I think that we are all going to, you know, redouble our efforts um, in his name. And then uh, just regarding council visits, uh, we're still waiting for green light from the mayor's office to start those meetings. Uh, hopefully within the next few days, we're going to get that. Um, I am excited about making those, those calls. Um, I really enjoy them every year and uh, being able to do them virtually is, is really great. So I thank uh, staff for pushing forward on that. Uh, thank you to everybody who was able to email your city council members a note of thanks following their unanimous vote to allow us to reallocate the returned and unused funds from OSP and CCSD contractors and letting us reallocate quickly to 18 organizations up to uh, a total of uh, $272,000. Also wanted to note that I spoke at city council um, during public comments uh, in support of the OSP CCSD budget for fiscal year 22, urging them to keep funding levels consistent. And I encourage all of you to send notes of uh, just encouragement and support to your city council members um, as they contemplate the budget for the year. Uh, and I would also note just uh, the cultural plan or the, on the mapping of um, uh, corporate art uh, and walking tours, et cetera. I think that also folds into my favorite thing to talk about, a cultural plan. Because uh, as uh, Commissioner Offsted noted, you know, from the moment you land at the airport, having the arts and visual art as a, a welcome to San Diego and an explanation of who we are as a city culturally, I think is so important. And having a unified vision for our entire region is so important rather than catch as catch can. So I will again <laughs> speak in favor of my favorite thing, the cultural plan. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, put forward a motion that the commission um, uh, have a request for city council for a proclamation for 
April as Arts and Culture and Creativity Month. All right, thank you, Tyler, for that report. Um, I've been notified uh, that our um, guest is now available. So I'm gonna ask Dahan to please introduce our guest and Bell to go ahead and promote him to, oh, there he is. Go ahead, Dahan, tell us about him. Okay, uh, this young man is an incredible young man. I actually got a chance to watch him grow up and perform when he was a student at the School of Creative and Performing Arts. But even greater than that, the art community uh, empowerment programs would do freedom schools in the summertime. And so this young man, back in the summer of 97, uh, we went to the Alex Haley Farm in Tennessee um, we stayed on that farm and they had a huge art and culture talent competition with young people from all over the United States that were there uh, for the Ella Baker uh, training. And this young man, you know, when he was younger, he looked really shy and kind of soft spoken and what have you. But when he got on that stage, he represented San Diego incredibly. I mean, it was so unassuming but the words that come out of this young man. And then he grew up to actually become a priest. Um, so he's just an incredible artist. He's just an incredible young man and role model, spiritual, physical, um, and an incredible artist. So I present to you, Jason Edmonds. Turn my mic on, how's everyone? Good, 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 good. Thank good you for morning. being here, Thank sir. Thank you all. I, I would have been on earlier. I was on an international call. Usually at this time, I'm out of the country, but due to COVID, we're kind of all grounded. But um, I uh, was milling over a piece, so I wrote uh, something. It's still a little rough. The title of it is um, uh, Incantation Against Imprecation Chanters Chanting Imperialism. So um, let me get into it. I want to thank, I want to thank all the Negus that bled on Hispaniola land that led Arawak, Taino, Yorba, Bacongo, Kalunga, Lunar, Lit, Night, Negus. Them the homie Ante Hong Bay Bays made Voodoo Baon Semdi the remedy, raised they voices, kupete, bulekai, and if we must die, we cutting heads, we burning houses, knees bowed in Boy Kaman Gator Grove, I vomit this song for you. To call you and your funky juju from Southampton, Virginia, Nat Turner Ninja, enter, live to die, to come back to Gullah Jack. Call me the little man that can't be killed. We are the hoodoo voices that can't be stilled. I call your names. You hardcore hope holders clutch tighter than Harriet Tubman's sidearm pistola with praying palms and wrists older. We still black with bliss bolder. These times are difficult yet still the molder. This, this is an esoteric AR-15, a conjure against colonialist dreams, reminiscing the days when we used to make hush puppies to bribe hounds as we made our escape through the Everglades. This is Penny Royal rubbed on pregnant bellies of Africans enslaved. This is fresh poke root on pork chops fed to massa from bed cots. I thank you. I thank you. I give honor to Ogun. I begin this ceremony with DNA because everything is born in blood. I say everything is born in blood. They say snitches don't get stitches no more. They get commendations and cushy desk jobs. Funny how these times they seem so ill. Eric Holder worships the God in the form of William O'Neill and COVID-19 is dressed to kill, especially black and brown and poor folks who fail to heal. I say everything is born in blood. Everything's born in blood. Whether we, whether blood we, be, we bleed or blood that's bought, perhaps these times are not as poetic as we once thought, but I still thank you. I thank you, Ethiopian Negus, Emperor Menelik II, 
the Amhara, the Battle of Adwa, Kush Nation, Kandase, Rasta, Partner, Kutcha, because, you know, they wasn't ready. But we got spaghetti mixed with Fit Fit and Tibbs and pies on heads on pikes, Kibra Nagas, niggas, niggas with their own Bible and biblical blood, solemn like Solomonic lines. I call you. I call you out of the pale gray clouds and dashiki shrouds out of our collective granddaddy sweat and boot sole and 40 acres stole, I call you to give us inspiration for a new nation, an artful incantation against the imprecations. We need a smile, a smile, a new sense, a style, an imagination, more than just the imagination to be free. We need some Pan-African technology, not a virtual Wakanda dream of a fictitious world that's seen. We need something, something dust and sand and breeze, something we feel, something that we say is real. I ask you to give us something dookie, something that stank so we, can, we can't ignore it, something our blood paid or paid for us to live for it, Something obtuse like a flaming noose, a, blue, a burning noose is a good noose, no matter whose noose it is. Give us martyrs and marigolds beyond our pain. Give us new names. Lead us back to action for the struggle ain't in vain. Black, our focus, black, our passion for this struggle is not in vain. Thank you. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you were able to make it. Thank you. Maybe come every month. I'll call you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was one of my, he's one of my favorite poets, you guys, from way back when this kid was in high school. He just does that. That's just, I don't even have words, but he just does that. That's, and then this year's Kumba Fest, the theme is, <laughs> Black to action, not in vain. And one of the things that is so wonderful about this young man is that you can just give him that theme and all of that comes out of his belly. <laughs> That's quite something. That's really impressive. Well, thank you, Dahan, for setting that up for us and introducing us to him. And thank you, Jashan, did I say it right? Yes, that's fine. Um, thank you very much. Um, you know, we, uh, we do a lot of talking about money and policies and stuff like that. And, um, but when we get to have some actual art in our meeting, it really pumps me up. I, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Anybody else who wants to invite an artist to come to any of our meetings anytime, I'm up for it. Um, okay. Um, gosh, now we have to go back to um, our meeting and uh, Commissioner Engagement Committee, um, I believe, Rebecca, do you have um, a report? I know that uh, Udoka isn't here today. I have not been contacted about that committee at all, Janet, sorry. Oh, okay, all righty. Um, let's move on then uh, to our director's report. Is there any public comment for this item? Members of the public in attendance, please raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Seeing none, Janet. Great. Okay, then um, we'll go ahead with our director's reports. Uh, Jonathan. So all Thank you. you. Thank you, Janet. Um, again, good morning, everyone. Um, I was hoping um, our guest would still be on, but I think he's left us. Um, Dahan, thank you for um, arranging for uh, Jazan to spend some time with us. That was really extraordinary. Um, you know, at the staff level, um, just like uh, the commissioners, we spend so much time focused on um, process procedures and funding. Uh, it's so important to be reminded of why we do this. So thank you. Um, Quickly at the staff level, I will turn it over to Christine for a very uh, a few quick updates. But before I do that, um, for the purposes of public record, <clears throat> excuse me, 
would like to remind everybody about the San Diego Arts and Culture Challenge, and in particular, phase three of the Challenge Fund. Um, that um, phase three is now open. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, phase three is open to mid-size organizations with pre-COVID budgets of 1.5 million to $4 million. Um, phase three is different than the first two phases in that um, <clears throat> fewer grants will be available, but they're going to be substantially larger, between 30 and $50,000. The idea is to recognize the fact that as organizations start to come out of uh, the impact of COVID, uh, they're coming out differently. And we want to support the opportunity for them to um, look at different um, business models. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's three categories. Um, they're called restart, risk, and transformational. Restart is um, the cost of reopening, um, the cost of COVID um, supplies, et cetera, bring staff back on, <clears throat> retraining, that kind of thing. The category of risk, which is really testing new revenue streams or new business models, and then and giving them the opportunity to close that financial gap so that they can take on the risk. Uh, and then thirdly is transform transformational, which is just recognizing the fact that some organizations will be merging, will be um, <clears throat> moving into um, 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 alliances, or they have to do the um, hard work of closing responsibly. So we want to recognize that and provide funding for um, that kind of work as well. Um, very importantly, the application period closes on the, uh, the first. So I believe that's next Monday at midnight. Um, so we're hoping that we can get, and, and that's open to um, San Diego County um, organizations. So it is countywide, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, <clears throat> secondly, if you don't watch the uh, California um, uh, Californians for the Arts website or their social media, it's a great way to stay on top of what is happening um, from a financial perspective statewide. Um, super exciting uh, to announce that another $50 million from the state budget is going to be allocated to nonprofit arts and cultural organizations. Application guidelines are not in place yet, but all of that is on um, Californians for the Arts social media. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then as everybody knows, March and April panel time. Um, so um, staff is working really hard uh, on um, building panels, getting materials out to panelists. We will be reaching out to all of you um, to invite you to attend panels. Um, just a reminder, they're shorter this year. We've done more panels, but they're half days um, so that the panelists can, uh, we can create more of an intentional group of panelists. Um, so we really hope that you can join us for all or part of these half day sessions. I'm looking at Commissioner Smith right now, who's always super excited to uh, attend the panels. So we'll uh, send information to um, all of you about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then lastly, to Commissioner Hughes's um, comments, um, April is Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month. Um, so at the staff level, we really hope to work with all of you to, um, um, last year, uh, frankly, it was a little bit lost because we were all, uh, in the early trenches of COVID. Um, but now there's an opportunity for us to, um, um, really elevate the importance during that month. So we look forward to working with all of you and very, um, importantly, um, Tyler, you asked about a proclamation, and we can work with you over the next few weeks to um, arrange a proclamation. And with that, I want to quickly turn it over to Christine to give you a few more staff updates. 
Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, good morning, commissioners. So um, just a few more updates from staff today. So um, as you may know, uh, artist Kate Clark has been commissioned by the city to uh, create a site-specific artwork for the phase two improvements for the Mira Mesa Community Park um, project that's currently under development in Mira Mesa. So last week, the city hosted a virtual artist open house, the first one we've done in terms of an artist open house. And um, uh, people came and got to learn more about her um, proposal and provide feedback to her. And so we have uh, another one coming up. So the public art team's gearing up for another one tomorrow. Uh, and that, so it's February 27th. It'll be from one to 2.30. We encourage you to drop in um, and have a look at um, Susan Logorecci's artwork renderings for the Fairmont Fire Station Public Art Project. So um, we'll, I'll drop the link in in just a minute. Uh, we, you don't need to sign up, just click on the link and come join us and learn more about her proposal uh, for that project. Um, and as Jonathan and some of our fellow our commissioners alluded to, we do have a number of opportunities open right now. So um, as um, Commissioner Mesa um, communicated, we do have a new artist opportunity out and available to, to artists. It's for the Bayer Park. Um, park development, which is a new development project the city is undertaking in San Ysidro community. And the artist will be commissioned to create a site specific artwork for the park. And the deadline for that is March 25th. So I'll drop the link to that um, in our chat as well. So if you have artists, uh, please share the link and let's, let's get as many artists interested in the project as possible. Um, additionally, we do have funding guidelines up on the website for the Arts and Culture Nonprofit Relief Initiative. So that was released just recently as well. And so as you recall and, and um, previously mentioned, that is um, being supported by unclaimed fiscal year 2021 transit occupancy tax funds. So it's approximately $271,101, which we're going to be able to reallocate to um, organizations and specifically fiscal year 21 organizational support, Creative Community San Diego and nonprofits who are facing economic hardship and business interruptions because of COVID. So the deadline for that's coming up quickly. It's March 12th. I'll drop the link in as well. So, um, you know, share with anyone you know who's a city San Diego contractor for fiscal year 21. Um, and then we are going to be launching, as um, Tyler indicated, we will be launching the second iteration of the city's um, Arts and Culture Citywide Impact Map. So as you recall, this is really to visualize and aggregate data um, and really show the reach and the, the meaningful impact that these organizations and specifically city funded organizations through OSP and CCSD, um, the impact they're having across the city, whether it's in a school or park, a library, their own facility, um, their project venue. So we anticipate launching that the week of March 8th, so coming right up. Um, the new map will feature data from fiscal year 2020, and uh, we will be presenting the map and highlighting that for City Council's Economic Development and Intergovernmental Relations Committee at their meeting on March 10th. So uh, we'll be reporting out on that and sharing that with you all shortly. And then last but not least, just one quick thing. I just want to give a big um, shout out to San Diego Poetry Out Loud 2021 champion and runner up. So Poetry Out Loud um, is um, a national uh, program for the supporting high school students and reciting poetry. And so the local um, uh, program just happened recently and Write Out Loud um, really helped um, spearhead that in terms of organizing it and really reaching out to um, various high schools, which obviously in the world of COVID and how schools are impacted was a little bit more challenging this year, but there was a really great turnout of high school students. So the winner, Kate Lynn Gee from Our Lady of Peace High School will, will be representing the county at the state finals, which will be coming up here in March. And I just wanna also thank Janet for uh, participating in the event and for Dahan being a juror. So uh, with that, that concludes my reports. Thank you, Christine. Um, we're turning it back to you, Janet. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Um, thank you, Christine, for mentioning Poetry Out Loud. That was really great. Um, and uh, Dahan, it was really nice to see you there judging that. The, uh, the young lady who won was really great. Uh, I, some of those performances were, you know, good, but, and you, if you don't know the poem, 
that's kind of hard, but um, the young lady who won was really dynamic um, and it was exciting to watch. I was glad to be asked. Um, okay, so here we are uh, moving on to new business for future agendas. Does anybody have anything like that they'd like to add? Not seeing anybody, okay. Um, then let's move on to um, our speed round. What arts and culture and creativity uh, experiences have you had this month that were exciting? Um, and uh, actually, Keith, I'm gonna let you talk in just a second because I'm going to tell you that one of my arts and culture experiences this month that was great was uh, I discovered Mr. Opstead's uh, Instagram which is loaded with awesome art. And I spent way too much time going back and harding everything because it was also great. So I highly recommend looking for uh, Keith's Instagram um, if you're looking for some good art. Anybody else have anything to share? Uh, I guess, uh, let, oh, let's see. Oh man, this little chat box. Keith. Okay, Keith, yes, you wanted to say something. Yeah, thanks so much for the shout out. You know, that started off as a arts, culture, and creativity, and actually March is Arts Education Month. And so I thought, how about, you know, with everything going on in the world, how about me to make every single day about arts and arts education? So I'm going to try and keep going. I post it every single day, weekends, everything. We'll keep it going as long as we possibly can. Uh, and thank you very much for that. I wanted to do a quick shout out to the San Diego Museum of Art. Uh, they're actually keeping up their longest running program, which is called Young Art. And I believe it's something like 90 years. And I think uh, Commissioner Brown can, can correct me if I'm off, but it, what it does is it highlights all the arts education that's happening in kindergarten through high school throughout all of San Diego County. It's a biennial exhibition. So it happens every other year. Uh, and this year, the theme for Young Art 2021 is My World, Our Planet. And so I uh, was able to drop off uh, several pieces that will be on display. And what I love is that even our Commissioner Michael Brown uh, was one of the esteemed jurors. So even during this difficult time, it's so fantastic that they're continuing to find creative ways of, of promoting the arts education and great work that's happening across our county. Um, and the other thing, I was going to say one other thing. Ah, not that important. Okay. Uh, Commissioner DiCenzo. Yeah, hi. Um, it's funny. Uh, I was going to mention a San Diego Museum of Art thing as well. Um, I'm not typically the, the type of person that would attend a virtual tour of any physical art because I, I feel like there's a lot missing if you can't engage with people and the artwork on a personal level but um, I actually attended one of the San Diego Museum, Museum of Arts virtual tours and it was the uh, anything goes modern and contemporary art breaking all the rules and it was just an hour-long um, docent program docent led program and, you know, at first I thought it was going to be surrealist art because the picture that they actually chose for the, the header was um, kind of this, you know, surrealist piece by Marguerite. And I was like, oh, great, surrealist art. But it ended up being more um, <laughs> like contemporary expressionism. So it was a little bit surprising, but, um, but I found it really, really interesting. And because it was only an hour long, it didn't... Um, you know, occupied a huge amount of my, my time. So I thought it was a nice break um, in between the city council meeting that I was watching as, as well. Um, and that on that note, I also wanted to make a point of uh, saying that um, council member Eli Rivera, which is district nine, actually has um, the same artwork on his walls as I do. <laughs> So I thought that was really interesting. Um, you know, you get to kind of see a little bit of, of the personalities of our council members when they're online virtually. And um, he has the whole triplet uh, or the whole, you know, set of the um, We the People from Shepherd Ferry on his wall. And I, I got so excited that I had to post it online and say, we've got, you know, art, art compatibility. So anyways, <laughs> I just thought that that was really interesting too. So um, that's, that's all I wanted to share for my arts and culture experience this week. Thank you, Tracy. That's a good story. Uh, Tyler? Uh, mine is a little masochistic. I've been, um, I've just been missing live theater so much that I started doing a deep dive on Tony Award acceptance speeches. <laughs> and uh, just, I mean, it's really a strange obsession to just watch them back to the 90s. But 
the wonderful thing is to see how many come from San Diego stages, how many artists all have come from San Diego stages and how many winning productions had come from San Diego stages. And it's really remarkable. That is something we don't get enough recognition for nationally and internationally is we are a darn good incubator of amazing theater. And so it's just something that I think we can all take a lot of pride in. And uh, if you have zero things to do on a weekend or weeknight, just hop on YouTube, look up Tony Award nomination speeches. Some of them are amazing. Some are a little like, oh, really? You do public speaking for a living, kid. Um, but they are heartening to see how many San Diego productions and San Diego artists are recognized nationally. Thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner Brown, I'm sorry I uh, got confused on this chat window and missed you. You had something to add. Oh, thank you, Janet. Uh, I just wanted to um, piggyback on Commissioner Opstad's uh, uh, commentary about young art. And it really was a, um, uh, a rare opportunity to see so much great artistic output that our kids are uh, producing even during the pandemic. And uh, I think a lot of the artworks were done, you know, at home and, uh, and to serve as juror for, um, for young art was such a pleasure, a privilege. And, um, I hope everyone gets a chance to come to see, uh, young art. It happens every two years, as Keith said, and, uh, it is our, uh, San Diego Museum of Arts, uh, longest running program. And, uh, and just to, for, for me to get that chance to like look at uh, what kids were doing artistically, creatively during the pandemic was so inspiring. And I've seen my own kids uh, doing the same. And uh, I think the, um, the artwork was really moving. It's all sort of environmental uh, themed uh, this year. And uh, anyway, I would love the chance to um, welcome all of you to the museum to show you around the uh, Young Art exhibition this year. Thank you, that's it. Thank you, Michael. Um, uh, I want to uh, make note, Rebecca uh, has very kindly um, given us all the link to look up our uh, city council staffers uh, that we want to be getting in touch with. And, um, and she's right. And Rebecca, you keep after that with us. We need pestermint sometimes. Um, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for coming this morning, uh, including I, uh, Dr. Janet? Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I wanted to share. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Don. I just wanted to say really quickly, I wanna invite everybody out for the month of March. We're doing every day art for health, mind, body, and spirit. Um, there, we're collecting books, you know, slightly used books. We have a lot, you know, there's a, a, a library box out there where you can drop books off. But the other part is we found out many of the young people, because like we said, art for help. So we walk every day. Many of the young people didn't have shoes. So the community is coming together and literally donating slightly used tennis shoes. And uh, we just kind of leave them there in front of our studio. And people can come by and pick up a book, pick up a pair of tennis shoes, and then join us when we walk to the park and we read for 45 minutes. So in the eight blocks of Encanto from 61st to 68th Street for the entire month of March, if you have some slightly used tennis shoes or some books that you would like you know, to recycle, please bring them to us and drop them mm -hmm. off for that community to be part of this rally. Okay, Dahan, can you give us an address? 6435 Imperial Avenue. Okay. And that's my space, you guys. Come check it out. It's a little space with a boutique for fashion and herbs and African resources. It has a middle section that has now been turned into a green screen studio. And then the back part of it is a Black Book Community Resource Nook, where we do our Black Boys to Men reading and mentoring programs. Awesome. Sounds great. Are there snacks? Sometimes. <laughs> okay. You may see me. Janet, I wanted to share something too. I had the mic off, but thank you if I can. <laughs> yes, please go ahead, Gina. Okay, just real quick. Thank you all so much. I just wanted to share that um, 
My theater company, Cultural Noir Performing Arts Company, which is now a nonprofit, we just had our first series, um, well, our presentation in our series, Voices of Blackness. So what we're doing this season is interviewing and speaking with, having conversations with cultural arts pioneers. So it was a blessing to be able to speak with Marvin X, who's based in the Oakland Bay Area, and he's the co-founder of the Black Arts Movement, along with Leroy Jones and Mary Baraka. So he's a mentor of mine, a very good friend, you know, still speaking around the world, still doing some really good things. And he's also on my theater's advisory board. So that's an honor right there. So more information will be upcoming in reference to upcoming events for the theater, as well as the Voices of Blackness series that we do have up through June under that theme. And then next season, we'll have a different theme, as well as working on other, you know, upcoming productions and everything. So I just wanted to share that. Thanks, Gina. Um, Thank lots you. of fun stuff coming up. And it's going to be great to get out again. Um, so um, we have, uh, it, anybody else have anything? Okay. Last thing? Yeah. Who's Hello. talking? Doreen. Oh, hi, Doreen. Hi, I'm having trouble with my machine, but it's working well enough to have gotten through this far. I just wanted to tell uh, Dijon, uh, why don't you send out uh, through email to each of the uh, commissioners? And I'm, I'm in very much interested in sending out to um, uh, the BAPA uh, Visual Performing Arts uh, 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 Center uh, for the city, uh, a, a blurb about used tennis shoes. And maybe I would be happy to gather them and bring them to you. But if we had a gathering place, uh, would be a wonderful idea for those who can't get out to Encanto or whatever. So um, if you can contact me, we can work together on this. Um, yeah, I think this is just so important, so wonderful. And um, and maybe we'll talk about the BAPA Foundation and, and how, if you want to apply. Uh, a little bit about uh, my BAPA Foundation is that um, October 24th uh, from four o'clock to seven o'clock, um, our kids, we've, uh, the kids from the Unified School District K through 12 uh, will be performing. And we've chosen certain uh, groups of all kinds of arts from poetry, theater, music, and dance to perform, uh, to show uh, the city what we're doing. Uh, and keep in mind that 40% uh, that of our children are from impoverished or low income families. So we hope you'll, you'll join us on um, October 24th and the children will be mingling and putting on uh, uh, dirt before the show and being a part of the entire um, uh, event, uh, even in the cuisine area, because we do have a culinary schools in two of our district uh, elementary schools. But anyway, it's gonna be fabulous. So I think we can all pull together. We're all got the heart for the kids and arts education. And I look forward to uh, talking to you, Dijon. Okay. Thanks everybody um, again for coming um, and thanks for introducing us to your cat, Dr. Bullock and um, Michael for introducing us to your kids. And um, it's really, and I believe somebody else had a cat in here too. Um, it's very nice to see. Um, it's the, it's the uh, silver lining to these meetings. Um, and with that, I'm gonna wish everybody uh, a happy weekend um, and say so long till next time. Thank you, Janet. Good to see everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.